See how much debt and mayhem religion has brought to humanity. Because religion is about looking for God, looking for God. Everybody is looking. Why are you looking for God? God is not lost. It's man that's lost. It's man that's lost that God came looking for him that was lost. Now we've reversed it through religion, looking for God. So we go pilgrimage, we go into the valley, we go mountain seeking for God. And God is looking at man and says, stop this stupidity. No religion brings life. It's the life is only found in the Son of God. This is what the whole world is missing, the life of God. And man is trying to replace the life of God with religion. And the more of revelation we gain with regards to the life and the light that is inside of, it begins to influence and affect the way we think. We are here for us from God's word. Um, I'm titling what I'm sharing as Jesus Christ, the light of life. Somebody say Jesus Christ, the light of life. Amen. And the scripture reading will be from the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 5. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 5. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Uh -huh. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Jesus Christ, the light of life. God wants each and every one of us to grow deeper in the revelation of his son, Jesus Christ, as the ultimate source of our life and light. Thank God for the song the choir sung, sung earlier on about deeper, deeper, deeper in love with you, deeper. Because when we don't grow deeper in the revelation of Jesus Christ himself, we live a shallow life. And God never made us to live a shallow life. A shallow life is a life that is unfulfilling. A shallow life is a life that is unstable. One minute you are in, one minute you are high, one minute you are up, one minute you are down. No. What keeps you going in life is the deeper revelation of Jesus Christ himself. And that's why... I, I think I, I captured one of the things I said last week and uh, put it on the social media. 
that without the ongoing revelation of he who died on this cross, then there's no church. It takes that ongoing revelation. So many times people say, I'm at a crossroad. Well, when you are at a crossroad, look at the cross. Because when you see the cross and you bring to mind he who died on the cross, you will go forward. Because at the crossroad, when you see him who died on the cross, you will know the way to go in life. I declare over your life that in whatever crossroad of life you come to, may you always see him who died on the cross. And may he who died on the cross, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, keep on showing the way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In that scripture, which uh, we read as, as in John 1, 4, which says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. That word used for life here represents more than just physical life. It goes beyond just physical life. It speaks of full physical and spiritual life. Because don't forget, we are, we are, we are primarily a spirit being. And we live in the physical body. We're not just physical man. We live in this physical body. But more than that, we are a spiritual being that lives in the physical body. And both for physical body and for spiritual life, we have that life. Our physical body needs the life. Our spiritual man needs that life. And the Bible says that in him was life. And that life was the light of man. Right from the beginning, you see when in the, in the time of creation, the world was, the Bible says, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And in the midst of that darkness, God breathed into that darkness. Because it wasn't just man that God breathed on. In the midst of that darkness, when he spoke his word, because in your word, in the word we speak, there is breath. Breath of God, breath of life broke through the darkness when God said, let there be light. Something, let there be light. That was the first thing he said. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. God said, let there be light. God said. And ladies and gentlemen, you can't speak without a bread. The bread of life. God, who is life, breathed upon the earth when he spoke the word of life. And that word of life came with light. Say the word of life came with light. Because you need to know that life and light goes together. God, who is life himself, said in the midst of the darkness, let there be light. And what happened? And there was light. Say there was light. With regards to that life, it was also that life that man forfeited. When Adam and Eve first sinned, death entered into creation. So disobedience of Adam and Eve goes beyond what we can ever imagine. It was almost like, literally, let me use this literal word, the light was quenched. In the life of Adam and Eve, the light was quenched momentarily. Just imagine a candlestick full of light. And then man seen. And then the light went off for a moment. But thank God for Jesus, who is the light. So when he came, he brought not just life, he brought light. So the light and life. Life and light. Jesus, the creator of life, was now entering into his creation to bring new life to those who will receive him. In that account, we all know in chapter 3 of the book of John, when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, he came to him by night. So it's almost like we know, everybody knows that you were a teacher. But this man came and asked him, Jesus, how can I? How can I be born again? How can I be saved? John 3 verse 5 says, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, 
it cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So they enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just heaven. It's an atmosphere of his presence. When Adam and Eve sinned, don't forget what God did. He sent them out of the garden and shut the gate. And put one of the angels that guarded that gate so that they don't come in. They were out. And ladies and gentlemen, if Adam and Eve were sent out, human, mankind was entirely sent out. But aren't you glad that through him who died on the cross, a way was made to come back in? Jesus said, most assuredly I said to you, unless one is born of water and of, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is work, and that which is born of the spirit is work. The same Jesus now went further to say in John chapter 10 verse 10, a scripture we all know. The thief, read everybody, the thief does not come but for war except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. This is what the whole world is missing. The life of God. And man is trying to replace the life of God with religion. No. No religion brings life. It's the life is only found in the Son of God. See how much debt and mayhem religion has brought to humanity. Because religion is about looking for God, looking for God. Everybody is looking. Why are you looking for God? God is not lost. It's man that's lost. It's man that's lost that God came looking for him that was lost. Now we've reversed it through religion. Looking for God. So we go pilgrimage, we go into the valley, we go mountain seeking for God. And God is looking at man and says, stop this stupidity. It's you that is lost. And I came to seek that which was lost. And all you have to do is receive him who has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Clap your hand and give God praise this morning. God is not lost. It's man that is lost. There is no power of darkness that is greater than the power of light. Say that with me. There is no power of darkness that is greater than the power of life, of light. In that John chapter 1 verse 5 then says, And the light shines. Present continuous. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. That word comprehend means katalaman, katalaman bano. Katalaman bano. Glory to God. Which means the darkness does not gain control over it. The light shines in the darkness. And darkness cannot katalabano it. The light of God is shining in your life. No darkness will cantalabano it. The light did not just shine. The light shines. It's sad to say that in the midst of this dark, in the midst of this pandemic, many people are, are not allowing this light to shine in their life again. They are allowing the events of the pandemic to begin to dictate how their life is. No, in the midst of the pandemic, the light shines. I said the light shines. That's why no matter what the trouble you go through, what you need is to get a revelation, on an ongoing revelation of him, and let that light keep shining. So the light shines. Where? Where does it shine? In the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Just a small amount of light can illuminate a dark place. 
the light of the world can drive out darkness wherever it is revealed. And the beautiful thing about when the light of God shines as this, it not only dispels darkness, but it suppresses power. Just like in this place right now, physically there is light. But if you look under your chair, you can still see some shadow. Before we came in here, the whole place was dark, so to say, but immediately the light was on, there was an atmosphere of clarity, but you will still see there will be some patches sometimes of darkness. But where, check under your chair, you see it's under you. That darkness, whatever looks like darkness, shadow. So sometimes that's how it is. That in the midst of that light shining, there is also a suppression of the power of darkness. That's why you don't allow some little resistance that you encounter when you go in the journey of life to make you feel the darkness is more powerful than the light. No. 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 This morning, in the name of Jesus, may the light of God not only dispel darkness, but may you suppress their power in and around your life. See, within the light shines. Far beyond that, the light and the life of Jesus has been placed inside each of us. See, the light and the life of Jesus has been placed inside me. So in him is, was life and that light was, a, was, a, was the light of man, but that light now also dwells in us. We've got the life and we've got the light of God. See, I've got the life and I've got the life. See, the life and the light of God dwells on my inside. Oh, hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. You don't know how much goes on when in an atmosphere of faith, you begin to rise up to worship, you begin to rise up to pray, and you begin to rise up to speak. There's a lot happens in the realm of the spirit. But all our flesh often wants us to feel is that nothing is happening. I still bring to mind in this Johnny, thus far, he has helped me with this past 44 years of knowing him. No, it's too late for anyone to make me doubt the integrity of God's word. It's too late for anyone to make me doubt the faithfulness of God. No matter what the challenges are faced, I still see that this light is shining. And this morning, no matter what darkness may be confronting you, may you break through by the light of God. Say the light of God. He says the light there and the life of Jesus has been placed inside each of us. When I mean inside each of us, what part of us has he placed this light and this life? It's our spirit. Say my spirit. He didn't place this life and this light in our mind. He placed it in our spirit. And the more of revelation we gain with regards to the life and the light that is inside all, it begins to influence and affect the way we think, the way we work, the way we see things. Show me a man who understands that the light and the life of God is inside him. The devil can't take their sleep from them. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the story of Smith Wigglesworth, one of the great men of God that ever lived on the face of this earth. It's interesting to know that Smith Wigglesworth actually also lived in a part of this United Kingdom in Bradford many years ago. It said regarding Brother Smith Wigglesworth that at one point, he was sleeping, and it was said that there was a literal physical presence of spiritual presence of Satan himself that came into his room. And while he was sleeping, he covered his head, and then he opened his duvet, so to say, and he looked, and he just said, oh, it's you. And he covered and went on sleeping. Did you get it? The man is sleeping, in the midst of his sleep, he sends the presence of Satan Lucifer himself. He opened his duvet and looked and said, oh, it's you. And he slept on. What a way to deal with the devil. 
I'm sure so some people, they will have been so fretful. Oh my, no, 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 no. And what happened next? Mr. Lucifer walked out. Revelation, when that's what happened, when light shines, darkness can't comprehend it. He can't contalaban no it. He had to walk out. And this morning I pray, you will not give an undue attention to Lucifer and Satan. Give more of your attention, all of your attention on the revelation of Jesus. And all the troubles. We don't deny trouble. But the, the good thing is that the faith of God on your inside puts you at a pole position. Puts you at an advantage that you are not fretful. Many people are becoming too fretful in this season. Why? Because they are not growing in the revelation of the life and the light of God. The life and the light of God. I submit to you, what keeps me going in life is the revelation of this life and the light of God. And I pray in Jesus' name, may this life and this light keep you going against all odds. Say, so keep me going against all odds. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the one who's, who, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now also said to you and I, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Your light will shine out of obscurity. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And in verse 16 of that same Matthew, he says in Matthew 5, 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This, this, this applies to everybody, young and old. You are empowered to be witnesses to this life. This life and this light of Jesus is not only inside you just to make you jerk and just sing. Now you become a witness. You become a witness to that life. I like that song the songwriters wrote. Something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me own. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know the joy that fills my soul. Something. Touches a man, what does he touch him with? He touches a life with his life and his light. He touches his life with his life and his light. And you he says, You are like a city set upon a hill whose light cannot be eaten. You don't need to introduce yourself, I'm a Christian, when you walk in the light and the life of God, it will be evident. Something inside you is powerful than what you know. And the more conscious you become of him who is in you, that what goes on around your life, around the world, you will not be bothered by what goes on. He said, let your light shine before men that they will behold this good work and, and put their trust in your heavenly father. Say, I will be a witness. Say, I'm empowered to be a witness to his life as we bring this message to a pause let me prophesy over your life today may the life and the light of Jesus permeate the government of our nation at all levels I can hear a better amen I say it again today may the life and the light of Jesus permeate the government of our nation at all levels May the life and the light of Jesus influence your mind, 
your thoughts and your viewpoints in the name of Jesus. May Jesus, the light and the life, bring a divine turnaround into your present situation to the glory of God. Say the light shines in the darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Say today, the life and the light, the life and the light of Jesus is bringing, do this with me, a divine turnaround in around my life. Say this morning, I receive a divine turnaround by the virtue of the life and the light of Jesus. Lift you and begin to thank him right now. Dear friend, I'd like to invite you to start a new relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today if you have never done so. By A, acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sin. And C, confess him with your mouth as your personal Lord and Savior. So say this after me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am. A sinner in need of a Savior. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that he died for my sin. And on the third day, God raised him up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you prayed it from your heart, God heard you. And guess what? You are saved. You are now a child of God. So I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church wherein you can grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's any way I could be of help to you, please contact the number on the screen. I'll be more than happy to support you and to help you. Until next time when I come into your house, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you.